Hey everybody, welcome to day 10. Yes, day 10. We are tracking through of 31 days of wisdom. We're going through Proverbs and today we're going to dive into chapter 10. So if you haven't read chapter 10 already, we're going to give you time to go ahead and read it. Um, just pause the video and come back when you're done. Hey, welcome back. Uh, thank you for diving into chapter 10. And let's go ahead and get grab some nuggets up out of it, okay? Uh, we're going to start with uh, verse number three first. And today, I'm going to be reading from the Passion Translation. The Passion Translation kind of breaks it down a little bit more uh, conversational like, and uh, so we can better understand what's going on, okay? So, verse three says, The Lord satisfies the longings of all his lovers, but he withholds from the wicked what their souls crave. God will satisfy the hunger for righteousness and he will reject the wicked because they hunger evil. If you hunger for righteousness, which is right standing with God, right? We're hungry for that. That's in his will. But anything outside of his will, he's not going to satisfy. That's why you see some people who are you know, living in evil or living in the dark, they can never, like, just quench the hunger that they have. Like, if they get something, it's always something else. If they get something, there's always something else, right? They can never quench the thirst or satisfy the hunger that they have because the only one that can fulfill that is God. That's why we see some people walk around with, you know, they have the emptiness inside of them and they're trying to fill it with all kind of people, places, and things. It's because that they don't have the right hunger for the right thing. That's why walking with the Lord and walking in wisdom is so important because it gives us insight and allows us to satisfy our hunger with the right person. And his name is Jesus, right? So that, that's, that's a good nugget to pull from there, man. Hunger for the right things and you will always be sad as Bad. All right, let's go into verse eight. I like and chapter 10 is full of so many nuggets, man. Um, chap, uh, verse eight, it says, the heart of the wise will easily accept instruction. But those who do all the talking are too busy to listen and learn. They'll just keep stumbling ahead into the mess they created. <laughs> Have you ever, somebody just started talking and then you just let them talk and they just, it, it just seems like, like everything, like they're just stumbling into a hole. It's like, hold on, let, well, let me tell you what happened. And they just keep on talking and they keep on talking and they keep on talking and they dig in a bigger hole than where they started. You're like, whoa, 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 hold up, man. Just, just stop. Just stop. It's because when they start talking, all sense goes out the window. All wisdom goes out the window. They're trying to prove a point as opposed to being true to their feelings and what they did. They're trying to satisfy their flesh. They're, they're trying to satisfy the thing that's going on or the conversation that's happening right there as opposed to being wise in an instant saying, ooh, I might have talked too much. Do you know somebody who just talked too much? You're like, bro, yo, that's TMI. Like, there's too much information. <laughs> like, I just asked, you know, you know, did you pick your child up from school, man? I didn't know about, didn't have to know about your colonoscopy. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, it's like two things don't have to do with each other. You know what I mean? So, you have to kind of beware of, of some of these people. Because idle talk can lead to wasted time. We don't want to sit and just have idle talk. We want to have conversations that birth something, right? That's what the wise do. They have conversations that birth wisdom. They have conversation that births knowledge and wisdom. They have conversation that elevates. They have conversation that helps, right? So when wise people get together, they have conversations of wisdom that help for tomorrow, okay? Let's go into 10, 16, chapter 10, verse 16, okay? And it says, the lovers of God earn their wages for a life of righteousness, but the wages of the wicked are squandered on a life of 
sin. I'm going to tell you this, man. Every guy, everyone gets paid for the work they do. You will earn a wage. The question is, is will your wage be life or will your wage be death? See, I don't think sometimes we don't pay attention to the things we say and or the things we do. Everybody who works gets paid, right? We don't think about the wages. We talked about folly yesterday. We talked about foolishness. Foolishness does not care about the wages. Foolishness cares about the feeling. They don't care about getting paid because the payment is coming. You know, I, I have a saying I like to say, I said, you know, we people might get by with things, but they don't get away with it. Everybody has to answer for every idle word the Bible says. So wisdom allows you to take in consideration the wage that you will receive. Everybody gets a harvest. The question is, is are you getting a harvest of weeds? Or are you getting a harvest of blessing? I don't know about you, but I want to be on the blessing side of the harvest. So, man, let, on, on that nugget, let's um, be aware that every time we open our mouth, every time we do an action, there's payment on the other side of it. And then we have to take in consideration what do we want our wages to be. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go to 18. We're going to go to verse 18. And it says, the one who hides his hatred while pretending to be your friend. Uh-oh, here we go. Is nothing but a liar. But the one who slanders you behind your back, prove that he's a fool and never to be trusted. This one, let, let, this one's a little bit, more complicated and it's something that I had to learn how to do and that's how to have hard conversations with people. How to have those true heart-to-heart -heart conversations with people about what you feel, about your emotions, right? It says the one who hides his hatred while pretending to be your friend is nothing but a liar. We can have hard conversations with people we love and say, hey man, I didn't like when you did that. You know, or, or man, do I heard this happen, man. Is that true? You know, to bring that thing to the forefront so we won't have hatred. Don't you know that sometimes the, you can walk around with an angst in your heart for, for a family member or for somebody who probably really didn't do anything or a, a, a hard conversation could have satisfied what was going on and could have squashed the beef? This is this is wise. It's wise to have those hard conversations because then the true feelings can come out and then we can get to the bottom of it. So hard conversations are definitely necessary to have great relationships in your life. And in the, the other half, the one who slanders you behind your back, prove that he's a fool of never to be trusted. Man, we ain't got to read too much in that. But this is the thing. How many times have we probably talked about somebody to somebody else in slander when all we had to do was have that hard conversation. See, this is the wise thing, right? The wise thing is to approach the person so there be no talking to somebody else. Y'all talking one-on-one -on -one and there'll be no slander behind neither one of you guys' back. So there'll be no angst or no hatred in your heart. All right, we're going to look into one more scripture and that's going to be uh, verse 25. It says, the wicked are blown away by every stormy wind. But the when a catastrophe comes, the lovers of God have a secure anchor. I love this. And it says, but when a catastrophe comes. Hear me, y'all. Because we serve God, it does not exempt us from but the good news, it says, when it comes, <laughs> the lovers of God have a secure anchor. See, this is the challenge of, of faith. 
The challenge of faith is not when everything is going good, when money is in your account, when the children that and right. Yeah, I said chilling. When the children that they right, when the spouse is acting right, when the dog is barking when you want it to. It's when your spouse is acting up, when your child is going crazy and the dog done pooped on your brand new carpet. It's when you can't see a way out that you know who holds the way out, that you trust the hand and the heart of the one who has the way out. And it's Jesus. See, winds and storms are going to come. But wisdom tells you that the one who holds tomorrow is bigger than the issue that you're going through today. So let's go ahead and pray. So Father, we thank you that this wisdom is giving us uh, knowledge and strength to have hard conversations and to trust you when the wind blows. To know that just because we're going through a storm doesn't mean that it will last forever and it doesn't mean that we're alone. That you promise you will never leave us nor forsake us and you always have our best interest at heart. So we thank you and we will forever give you glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hey guys, don't forget Put in the comments the nuggets that you are getting out of this. Like there are so many great uh, challenges and so many great verses and so many great nuggets and so many great takeaways in the book of Proverbs that we can't get to all of them. So let me know the ones that hit you the most. Let me know. Let me know what challenged you. Let me know what helped you and let me know what you probably need a little bit more uh let's say a little bit more testing in a little bit more uh work let's say in the area uh, but thank you guys again for joining us and we'll see you tomorrow for chapter 11 love you guys mm -hmm.